Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. In this video, we're gonna continue with the custom XIB file, and I wanna give you some hands-on experience with actually working with it in code using NS Layout constraints. So if you haven't read the guide on NS Layout constraints or auto layout, I, I recommend that you do that. You can find that if we jump over to our Safari browser and look for auto layout guide. And here you can get an introduction. There's a couple of videos also with the WWDC conferences where they published how to work with this. So I would start here. I do believe they link to some of those videos within this tutorial introduction. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back to Xcode. And in here, we've created some stuff. This doesn't have any constraints applied to it. So if I were to be running the app, which I think I am, and we rotate using the command right arrow, you'll see that these things just sort of stay here. Now you might want these to stay centered. Maybe you don't want to support this orientation, but what we're going to run into is things will go off screen. So we see down here, this is going off screen and depending on your interface, you're going to want it to adapt appropriately. So auto layout allows us to give it those rules that say, this is where the content goes. Now I do think it's easier to get started with a portrait app that doesn't need to support a landscape because you don't have to think about how to redesign the interface. You can just focus on getting this working and out the door so that you can get your first app out there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into our view controller class. I'm gonna add some constraints to it and we're gonna see how this is going to break things. So I guess the first thing before I do anything is we need to turn off the special, I guess, mask that's going to be doing the automatic sort of auto layout. And that's using our auto sizing masks. So what we do here is for any view that we want to disable this for when we're doing this in code, we say translates auto resizing masks into constraints and we say no. So by default it is yes. And so if we run it, things might disappear or things might not be interactive. So we can click on this and you can see we cannot do anything. So probably the frame is zero right now. Whereas we can still interact with these. So those are not affected because this is the programmatic one. This is the one on the bottom that we did add. All right, so there's two ways to add constraints in code. You can use the descriptive, I guess, verbose, uh, what do you want to call it? The visual syntax, and then you can do it by adding specific constraints. And so we're going to do it by adding specific constraints. Now, the first thing to note is that we're going to create a constraint, and we need to add it to our super view for whoever this is. So whoever's going to own this view, and that would be our self.view. So here we'll start with self.view, and then we say add constraint. Now we have two options here. If you want to use the visual syntax, you need to use add constraints because it actually returns an array of constraints, but we're going to add a single constraint. And so I'll show you what I mean right here. So if we do an NS constraint, layout constraint. So NS layout constraint, there's two methods that we can use here. We can use constraints with visual format, or we can use constraint with item. We're going to do the second one because it's more powerful for what we need to do. This first one's nice, but it doesn't allow you to do all of the layout things that you want. It doesn't allow you to align all the edges. And so there's less control. And I, I honestly don't know if you can center on the X or the, the Y using the visual format. So this works. And I'm going to show you how we can get this working with two constraints. And we'll run into one issue, but I'll show you how to resolve that one. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to add a constraint to the item. Now you want to add the constraint to the primary item. I, I would say that there's sort of a primary and a secondary item. When we have constraints, the primary item is the, the one that we're trying to set up. So this case, in this case, it is slider view. That's going to be our primary one. So we're going to do that one first. I've noticed slight differences depending on the order of adding these constraints. So that's the only recommendation I'm giving for adding this one as the first item rather than the second item. So we're going to constrain an item to another item. There's going to be a relationship that we establish, and it's going to be based on these different attributes that we call the NS layout attribute. So here we start typing NS layout attribute, and you'll notice that we have a, a bunch of options here. So we can do the different edges. We can do the center X coordinate, the center Y coordinate, even the height, um, all these things that we can do here. So here, 
we want to pin to the bottom. So the thing that we're looking for is bottom. Now I'll just double click that to insert it. Now I'm going to put a, a new line after everything just so that everything is easier to read since there's so many parameters here. So I'm just going to press enter now. Then I'll press tab to go to the next item. Here we're going to do NS layout relation. Almost all the time you're going to do relation equal. There's only a few instances where you do the other two. So just get into the habit of starting with equal because that's the easiest to work with. So we're saying what we want to say with this expression is we want to say the bottom of our slider view is going to be the bottom of our iPhone view. And so that's what we're doing right now. So I'll do a new line and then our item is going to be self dot view. So that is the bottom of the iPhone. I'll put another new line and then our attribute here is again going to be the bottom. Another new line, our multiplier here. So this is, these are ways which the multiplier and the constant are ways that we can control how, how close we are, how far away. And for most things, you'll want a multiplier of one. Sometimes you want a higher multiplier, but for the simple cases, it's just going to be one. And the same thing with constant. We generally will always have a zero constant, but if you want an offset, if you want that to be 20 points above the bottom, you can put 20 there. So with that, we stop and we rerun. And now we, we no longer see the view, it's gone. And so there's a, an issue that we're gonna fix on the, I guess we'll go to that right now. We might be able to get it to appear again. So in every, every UI view, if we jump to the documentation, so I want to hover over with the option key and click on it and go to the class reference. In here, there should be something called an intrinsic size, and we see intrinsic content size right here. Now, this is important for auto layout, and so this is something that if you do use auto layout and you're trying to do it in code like I am, you'll want to set this because this will reduce the number of layout constraints that you need to set. And some things this makes sense. In, in this case, we're creating a slider view. It's going to always be a fixed size. It's always going to be 160 by 80 for the use cases that I'm using for in my applications. And so I can set the intrinsic size to that size, but rather than set it just to a specific constant, I'm gonna grab it from the XIB file when we load, because I really want that XIB file, the size of it, to be driving all of our calculations. So we're gonna go ahead, we can just copy this, or I can show you how to get that in our slider view.m. So let's click on slider view.m, go to the bottom, uh, I guess a, a quick way, and I, I won't paste it here, but you could paste it if you're following along, is to just start with the dash, and then you can hit escape. You can see all the options for methods that you can add here. And we start typing intrinsic content size. So once I type int, we see intrinsic content size here in the bottom. And here we're gonna return a size. So we could return a CG size make, and then pass in 160 by 60, but instead of that, I want to actually create an instance variable. And at the very top, we don't actually have the, the interface file here. So I'm gonna add it, and this is gonna be a special version. So we can create a, a special version of our interface that will allow us to have sort of private variables and properties. And so that's what these three lines of code allow us to do. So I'm just creating some IVARs in here, and what we're gonna have is a CG size and we will call this a intrinsic content size. So we'll just do that. And then when we actually set up our bounds, I am going to try and set that. So I'll say underscore intrinsic content size is equal to, and then self dot bounds after we have set it dot size. And then I want to make sure that I also do it for the init with coder. Um, we know that this is, is sized when we do the super call. And so in here, I should be able to set the intrinsic content size as well. So I'll just grab self and then the, let's do this at, no. Yes, let's do this afterwards and see if it breaks anything. Is equal to self.bounds.size. So we'll just put it right down here. 
and then we'll rerun and see if this behaves any differently. And we have to return the variable. So let's put that down here. So now we have a, a new variable. We're returning that. It's being set in both of our constructors. If you have any other constructors, you need to make sure that the, the logic here is going to be run at least once before things happen. And here we see that it does appear and we are on that bottom edge and it looks like we're interactive again. So the intrinsic content size is used for the UI labels and the UI buttons with their default sizes. So when we, th we throw them onto a canvas here, we actually don't always need to specify the, the width and the height. We can get away with just describing the leading space and then maybe we could center it and it could be off center. So actually that was the, yeah, that's the right one. So it's gonna be centered vertically. We can click on this and it's gonna be offset by 24 points. So here I didn't need to specify the width and the height and this is actually beneficial when you work with uh, localizing your app. Um, so we're getting that sort of benefit from when we run the, with the intrinsic content sizes, it's behaving sort of how the labels behave. The last thing is we just want it centered. So let's go ahead and center it. I'm going to hide our tabs here so that we can just see the code. And we're going to say self.view. So this is the view that's going to contain our slider view. And if we were relating this to any other view within that hierarchy, we would also want that view to be contained by self.view. And if that's not the right view, then you need to go up uh, a level. So here we'll add a constraint, and this will be very similar to what we did before. NS layout, not attribute, but constraint. And then we say we want a constraint with item. So this will create a single constraint. The item is going to be slider view again. Our attribute is going to be NS layout center. So our attribute center X. And I'm just putting new lines in here to just make this easier to read. We're related by the NS layout relation equal to item self dot view. And our attribute is again going to be the center X. Multiplier will do one. And let me just back up here. Then we'll do our constant, which will be zero. And I can show you what happens when we play with those constants, but this should center us along the X axis. So we should be centered along the bottom. And you can see it here. Now that rule will work when we rotate. So I'll do the command right arrow. And now we see that that component or widget is centered. We have an intrinsic content size. So we're able to interact with anything inside the bounds here. And that is how you can work with a custom XIB file that you can throw into your view, either at design time using interface builder, like we've done up here, or like we've done with code where we load it in code and it, it loads the interface file and sets everything up using its own intrinsic content size so that everything is interactive. All right, so with this, you can create reusable components that you can use on one screen or you can use on multiple screens. And this will support apps like my Matte Border app. So here you can see I've stylized the background image. I've made it so that there is the ability to have gestures that interact with this label as well as this label. I, I color it to indicate when the user is touching. And this is just a, a nice way to simplify user interface using gestures, using a reusable component that we can create four copies of and then repurpose it for different attributes. So this is our width at, attribute right here. So we're getting wider, we're getting narrower. And then this is our height, so we can get taller or shorter. And then this is our image property, so we can stretch out or shrink the image. And so this is just an example of why you would want to embed a view and then how you can do it in this little demo. So thanks for watching. If you have any other questions, you can find me at iphonedev.tv. All right, so you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at on Paul Solt. And then you can see more tutorials and you can send me an email if you want or find me on Twitter and let me know what other tutorials you would like to see.